all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the HSBC Arena here in Buffalo, New York, where tonight, the Bella Entertainment and Tony Holden Productions is proud to present the Night of the Heavyweights, the next generation, brought to you in association with your King of Beers, Budweiser, and sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission. The three judges at ringside scoring this first bout will be Frank Adams, Melvina Lathan, and Steve Weisfeld. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Charlie Fish. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, his official weight, 236 pounds. He has a perfect professional record, 18 bouts, 18 victories, including 11 knockouts. Originally from Turkey, but now living and fighting out of Frankfurt, Germany, Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated Sinan Shamil Sam. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trimmed with yellow. He officially weighs 213 and three quarter pounds. And he also has a perfect professional record. 36 bouts, 36 victories, including 31 by knockout. Originally from Havana, Cuba, now living and fighting out of Miami, Florida, here is the undefeated former cruiserweight champion of the world, the Black Panther, Juan Carlos Gomez. You've each been given your instructions in the dressing room. I want a clean fight. I want a clean fight. Touch him up. We have prospects and suspects, and by the end of the night, we'll be left with rejects and projects and one or two contenders. Which ones? Sam fighting in the United States for the first time. It's been widely reported uh, on the websites here that his name is the two words Samuel Sam. He told us yesterday Samuel is just a middle name. The family name is Sam. So it's Gomez against Sam. Gomez the southpaw and by far in the view of most the more technically skilled boxer Sam needs to get close to Gomez pressure him crowd him and land some body shots to have a chance to win. Uh, Sam is putting pressure on him, uh, and that's the only way he's going to be able to fight Gomez. Gomez seems to be wanting to fight a good technical fight, punching, moving, changing, getting away. But if he continues to keep the pressure on him the way he's going, he's going to eventually have to stay toe to toe with Sam. And you see Sam trying to hurt Gomez to the body with the right hand. He's basically a right hand puncher. And he got Gomez's attention with that first right hand shot to the body. And he just landed another right hand. So Juan Carlos backing up and creating distance. And he'll be trying to do that throughout the fight. When they're at arm's length, Gomez is regarded as having a big advantage. He's what you call a real busy workman type fighter. There's Sam firing that right hand to the body again. And with Gomez in the southpaw stance, Sam should have a chance to land his right to the body perhaps more frequently than against some conventional fighter. There's a big right hand upstairs by Sam. Gomez smiling at him, kind of smiling through his teeth. They know each other, as we mentioned before, from their days fighting for the same promoter in Germany. And Gomez has had a tremendous amount of amateur fights. Well, both of them have had a good amateur background, come to think of it. Yeah. <laughs> This has to be a war of attrition for Sam. He's got to take the incoming in order to eventually deal out some of his own incoming. And, and... 
That'll be ruled to slip. Three, nope, they're going to call it a knockdown. Four, five, Sam is trying to insist six, that it wasn't a knockdown, but now he says, okay, seven, I'll take the count. Eight, so two, Gomez gets an early scoring advantage with the knockdown of Sam. That makes it tough on Sam, falling behind the counter-punching skilled boxer early. Sam seems to be just a step too slow, and Gomez knows it, and that's what he's running his punches off, and then he gets back in a distance right away so that Sam can't catch him with a counter-punch. When we go to Sam's corner, where the trainer will speak German, our interpreter is our German interpreter, Jens Hollick. When we go to Gomez's corner, where the trainer will speak Spanish, our interpreter is Hector Garcia. Breathe in, come on, breathe in, take care. Take in there. Juan Carlos. Sin confianza. With a lot of confidence. No deje que se te pegue. Don't let him get no clear to you. Don't, don't let him keep throwing that jab and counteract. Counterattack, counter top que and bottom. Jab, okay? But you have to no keep that jab. Was it a legitimate yes. knockdown? Yes, yeah, a definitely a good knockdown. Straight left through the center, followed up with a right hook. So a good first round for Juan Carlos Gomez by CompuBox numbers. 20 of his 24 connected punches were power shots. 20 of 42 power shots against Sam, who isn't exactly a defensive fighter. Oh, you know, and both guys seem to have left themselves open for the straight shots through the center. Particular Sam. Sam coming in with a record of 18 and 0. He had only been knocked down once prior to the knockdown, now charged against him in the first round here. Come on, keep punches up. There is a bit of a soft underbelly in Sam. And Gomez is trying to dig his fists right through it. There's a hard left hand by Gomez. Sam momentarily stunned again as Gomez perfectly targets the straight left hand. Yeah, the speed of Gomez is being a big factor, and he always is twisting, giving him angles, punching, changing directions. See that continually moving, and that seems to be a big problem for Sam because Sam is a straightforward guy. He's not used to making all these pivots and turns. Sam getting tagged more or less at will by Gomez as he comes straight forward trying to get in a body shot. Gomez just picking his angles and beating Sam to the punch and pot shotting him from the outside. And when he finishes up with every combination he's always moving Sam's body in one direction and he moves his body off in another direction. Look at that moves left lands a straight left hand again giggles at his success in the ring. That was a hard right hand by Sam. Yeah, and he finished up with his right hand and, and he moved off to his right. Body shots by Gomez. Sam comes back with one of his own. You see the hand speed advantage for Gomez. Sam trying to put everything he can into those right hand shots up under the heart. That's his only chance of getting anything out of his fight is a straight right hand through the center. But he's taking quite a beating in the meantime as he's trying to get in to do that. Gomez goes underneath with the left hand. Gomez must feel as though he's toying with Sam in there. There's such a dramatic disparity in their mobility and skills. And now here's Sam jumping into his face and firing aggressively to try to redress the balance. Gomez looks good at this weight, according to his handlers. Uh, he had to suffer to make the cruiserweight weight for several years. He was fighting at around uh, 200 pounds when he wasn't uh, in, in fighting trim back when he was an amateur, they said. Yeah, they, Go they, ahead. as an amateur, he was right in the same weight as the great legendary Felix Savone. And so rather than having fight Savone, he kept sweating him down. And then when he turned professional, he had to continue to do that also. We asked him yesterday if he'd been hit with big right hands before, and as his manager pointed out, you spar a thousand rounds with Felix Savone in training, you've been hit with a few right hands. <laughs> Mr. 
Give him some water. How do you feel? He's faster than you. You have to hunt him. Stay close to him. Keep your protection up. Keep your arms up. You did very well in this round. Keep your hands up and keep close to him. Gomez lands the same straight left again through the center that he landed earlier. His speed is a big factor at this stage of the fight. And as the fight goes on, I think you're going to see Sam getting closer and closer to him because even though he's being outpointed, he's putting a lot of pressure on Gomez and making Gomez throw a lot more punches than he probably would like to be throwing. So the big question becomes how much of Sam or how much can Sam take from Gomez in trying to get in close as he waits to close the distance and land his own big shots. Absolutely. That is a big question. And also, will he bust up or swell up a good cut if he doesn't get hit too serious? Can't really stop Gomez's attack, can Sam? I mean, he, he blocks some of them, but by and large, Gomez is just picking his target and firing away. I think Sam has made up in his mind he's going to get hit quite a bit in the fight. He's just going to try to weather it and try to get in close and land a short right hand. Sam trying to use a little head movement to slip a punch or two and get inside. Doesn't work. He gets hit anyway and just keeps pulling forward. The bull of the Bosporus lands an uppercut. Well, he was smart enough to try it again anyway. One thing that's apparent to me is that Gomez really doesn't commit to his punches. No. They're short arm punches, good stinging punches. I wouldn't call them heavyweight punches. He has a boxer's mentality. As he's trying to punch and get away right away, he's, he's looking forward to winning the decision. If he wins it by knockout, I think he'll accept it, but I don't think that's in his plans. But on the other hand, there are a lot of guys in the division that he could beat by decision with this skill, his southpaw stance, and the quickness he's showing. Yes. You're right. And, and certainly he'd be favored over any of the other five heavyweights on this card. Samuel Sam's left eye beginning to swell just a little bit. And Gomez popping that left eye with his right jab. <laughs> Referee asked Sam to keep him up. Referee is Charlie Fitch from New York. Sam walking through punches again to try to get in and land a right hand. And as the power begins to decrease in Gomez's shots, Sam gets closer with impunity. Sam is getting much closer to him now. And Gomez is not getting away as easy as he was after he finishes up punching. Is he cutting off the ring in the right way, Sam? Uh... I, I would say so. Couldn't you consider how slow he is naturally anyway? So he's doing pretty good. But the fact that he's steadily moving forward and not standing in one spot. Sam showing a lot of will, a lot of courage, as he tries to walk through Gomez's shots and lands another single right hand of his own. This is the old hard punch versus a lot of punch equation. Absolutely. And we'll see if Sam can make it work for him. Each Wednesday night at 10 p.m., catch the premiere of Inside the NFL. Join hosts Bob Costas, Chris Collinsworth, Dan Marino, and Chris Carter as they bring you exclusive game highlights, analysis, interviews, and features that truly take you inside the NFL. In addition, special correspondents Wanda Sykes and newcomer George Lopez offer their own unique perspectives on the National Football League. Great uppercut by Sam. It's a punch that Gomez was not expecting. Reminiscent of Lennox Lewis's yeah. uppercut against that's, Vitali Klitschko in the sixth correct. round in Los Angeles. Yeah, when you're leaning in on a guy, that's when you at least can expect it and, and can see uppercut coming. And if you catch him right on the point of the chin, sometimes you've got yourself a shocking knockout. Oh, yeah, it's easy because the guy isn't prepared for it. 
Copy box numbers in round three. Gomez 46 out of 103. Sam 18 out of 45. Gomez connecting on 34 power connects. But again, the equation is how much punishment can Sam take and how much damage can he do after he's taken it? Harold, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jim, 30 to 26, three rounds to nothing. One Carlos Gomez. Jim, I'll tell you something. He's just too quick, throws too many punches. Beautiful ring generalship. He changes direction really nice. Sam catches up to him. Gomez goes the other way. Yeah, at this point, uh, it appears entirely possible, if not likely, that Gomez won't lose a round. But that doesn't necessarily guarantee that he's going to win the fight. That's right. One punch can turn everything around. But the fact that Gomez has never been knocked out, uh, when we was told knocked down, even as an amateur with 350 amateur fights, plus a professional career, means that Gomez has a good chance of winning this fight on the decision. Look where Sam is fighting now, though. Suddenly, Sam has turned it into a phone booth fight, as Gomez is no longer using his feet enough to keep him away. No, he's not. He's getting much closer to him now. Because Gomez is standing still. But still, Gomez is out punching him. Sam trying to knock Gomez into the rafters with that uppercut. On the belt line, Charlie Fitch is going to warn him again. All right, you okay? okay? At some point, Sam will probably say, hey, go ahead and deduct the two points. What the heck does it bother me at this point? I'm down five rounds anyway. Yeah, it don't look like he's going to win a decision anyway. He should be hitting Gomez on the arms, on the shoulders, wherever he can. Well, Sam is get... telegraphing that uppercut now. now. He's going to be very much in danger of getting points taken away pretty soon if he doesn't watch those body shots that's coming in right on the cup line. They trade shots in the center of the ring. Gomez lands about seven punches to every one for Sam. Sam knocks Gomez backward with the right hand. And what's interesting, these guys very seldom get into a clinch. Gomez no longer has that happy-go-lucky expression on his no, face. No, no, the fighters get much closer now. And Sam is still pounding away at the body when he gets a chance. <laughs> Sam may wind up with cauliflower ears. Two shut eyes, all his teeth broken out, but he's still going to be trying to win the fight. Gutty performance. Let me see your face. You look okay. You have to keep off the pressure. You have to break him. You knocked him out good, but you have to keep up the pressure. Let me see your eye. You got to work him from the outside. Not, don't get close to this guy. From the outside. He's, every time he stands in front of you, he throws you that punch right through, through the middle. Through the outside. Don't, don't get close to this guy. You hear that Gomez's handlers are concerned about getting into a slugfest and that the key word from Sam's people were break him, and they meant break him, break his spirit, break him down, just break his will. A very hard assignment. And Harold Letterman respects Sam enough for what he did tactically in the fourth round to give him the round, even though CompuBox numbers had Gomez landing many more punches. Letterman says, hey, Sam closed the distance. Sam landed a couple shots. That's what he wanted to do. That, so, was, that was what you call a comparison round. He did better in that round compared to other rounds. So he gave him the round. It's often what judges are doing a lot of the fights. And that's what makes it so controversial when a guy comes down the stretch and wins three or four in a row. And he's been given some of those compared to rounds earlier. And then you have those upset decisions. Gomez dropped his left hand to his waist. And Sam landed a big right hand that got the crowd excited again. Then Gomez showed off his ability to land a four or five punch combination in return. I loved it between rounds when the guys in Sam's corner said, 
Your face looks fine. <laughs> yeah, sure it does. <laughs> if you like hamburger. Here's the problem that Sam really has. This type of fighter must be able to punch. He does not have a big punch. I agree with you, and he's not throwing enough of whatever he's doing also, Larry. He's not punching enough. If he would punch more, he punches good enough, I think, to get Gomez's attention, but he's just not punching enough, period. But he's gotten a little better at ducking and slipping. No longer does Gomez land totally at will. Although still, Gomez is able to land most of what he throws and able to dictate to the pace of the fight when he's energetic enough to do so. Sam waiting for Gomez to stop moving his feet. Gomez is fighting a good technical fight, using on all of his experience he's had in those 350 amateur fights and I guess about 40 professional fights. Even though he's tired, he's doing things instinctively. And after he finishes up, he moves away. Sam almost needs for Gomez to stand still for him to have a chance to land something significant. It's happened a few times. And it, it looks like Sam may be slowing down a little bit. Why, why, why wouldn't he? I mean, if you beat on a rock enough, you start chipping away at it. Body shots from Gomez. Sam says, okay, you want to go downstairs? I'll come upstairs. <laughs> Gomez seems to be trying to humiliate Sam in there. And Sam lands the big right hand, and Gomez goes nowhere, validating Larry's point. But he's not a huge punter because a big punter would have hurt Gomez with that shot. Gomez may just have a good chin, too. Breathe in. Breathe in, guy. Breathe in. Let's, let's go. Breathe in. You got to throw that jab. Wrap, wrap. What you did in this last round was very good. If you want to win this fight, you have to hit him more. More and more. Like you just did. Second stone. Gomez's trainer is a fellow Cuban defector named Pupi Della Torre. Tough, good looking guy. That's why he can get away with a name like Poopy. <laughs> and you heard Poopy telling Gomez to flick the jab and be busy with it. Seems to me at some point that Sam is likely to cut, taking this many yeah, shots. He's taking a lot. He's got those real high cheekbones anyway to start off with. But so far it hasn't happened. No, but it, it looks like the only way that he's going to win this fight is going to be on a knockout. And that's, I don't think, going to be likely because of his infrequency of punching, plus the fact that I believe that Gomez has a very good chin when he does get hit. Sam is painfully slow compared to Gomez, but determined to stay in there. And again, he wraps Gomez across the chin with a well-thrown right hand. And as a result, the mouthpiece came out. I didn't think that was an appropriate time for the referee to stop the fight Fine. right after Sam landed one of his best punches. You think that was a break for Gomez, right, Larry? Well, usually the rule is that you wait until there's a lull in action, which was not the case this time. Well, if that was a lull, it was brief. And again, Sam lands the right hand. And Gomez comes back with a very big left hand shot. I believe I saw there a four or five punch combination uh, downstairs by Gomez. You don't see that too often. Sam 
with a brutal shot to the body, another right hand upstairs, and suddenly Gomez is eating right hands. Why is that, Emmanuel? He's slowing, he's getting tired. Time! He's getting tired, he's slowing down. And right now the fight is within range for Sam to win if Sam would pick up his volume of punches. Second time in the round that the referee Final has chosen box. to stop the action at a moment when Sam had just landed a big right hand on Gomez. Sam goes back to work, trying to land another big one. Crowd's starting to get with him. He's got Joe Macy's coloring. Black hair, black eyes. Pounding to the middle of the belly, and again the right upstairs, trying to get in the uppercut. Now Juan Carlos Gomez pushing him off by the shoulders. Gomez is fighting a surprisingly aggressive fight. This is not what his pedigree is. Yeah, but I... Gomez dropped his hands and ducked the right hand. Gomez is very vulnerable right now. And Sam, intelligently, recognizing that Gomez is tiring, keeps going to the body to try to drive the point home further. This may be... Oh, that's a hard right hand, right on the heart. This may be a so-called easy victory for Gomez, but when he goes home tonight, he'll feel it, and maybe for the next week. Yeah. Ringside, uh, the great Ray Leonard, who is a co-promoter of Gomez. Uh, Leonard actually promoted three of Joe Macy's fights. Been trying to break into the big time as a promoter for several years. Must be pleased by what he sees. Wound up having differences with Macy's Sam father. Sam has landed manager. some tremendous right hand shots here. As a result of that right hand, the mouthpiece came out, and if he would keep shooting more of those punches, I think he has a very good chance, which is, I hate to say this, of possibly stopping Gomez for the first time. Gomez is getting very tired. CompuBox numbers, fascinating, because Juan Carlos Gomez has thrown 396 power punches. That's a ton. And landed more than half of them, according to CompuBox. Sam, 61 out of 140, meaning that he's thrown about a third as many power punches as has Gomez. But he's trying to make every one of them count. Most of those 61 landed power connects are hard right hands, either to the body or upstairs, and they could shift the fight. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, 58-55, four rounds to two, one Carlos Gomez. Jim, I gotta tell you something. Sunil Sanders has landed some awfully hard right hands. Bad butt. Bad butt. Bad butt. butt. Bad butt. We can't tell from where we're sitting whether there's any blood. But there may be, since the referee is leading Gomez to a ring physician. Excellent Dr. Barry Jordan and the New York State Athletic Commission Excellent will step up on the apron and take a look. Yes. Yes, he initiated it. All right. Time in! And the significance now of the headbutt cut is that it is above Gomez's left eye and could conceivably make it a little more difficult for him to see Sam's right hand coming upstairs. So Gomez tries to put a little hurt on Sam to stem the tide. In my view, uh, this is a one very, very one-sided fight so far for Gomez. However much uh, Sam deserves credit for hanging in there, but uh, He's getting the Bosporus kicked out of him. This is reputedly the first time Juan Carlos Gomez has ever been cut. Although sometimes fighters forget that little cut I had back in 1999, that kind of thing. And now Charlie Fitz calls time for the fourth time in the last two rounds. The second time to repair this wrapping on the glove. Popular national sports in Turkey are, of course, weightlifting. 
the thing they prize the most, wrestling. They have very few professional boxers, although they do send amateur boxers uh, around the world into the Olympics. That, of course, is how Sam launched his career, though he was born in Germany, now lives in Ankara. Oh, massive right hand, and Gomez's mouthpiece comes out again, and Gomez looks at Fitch as if to say, what do you mean, you're not gonna stop it now? Sam gets hit several times, tries to come back with the right hand. Sam punches with much more authority than Gomez. Gomez still is punching like an amateur. He's, he's trying to shoot Shan when he punches. This is a perfect example of a fight that if Sam would come back and fight good to the next three rounds, he could win this round, this fight. But he's got to throw punches because his accuracy is very good. He just isn't punching enough. The fascinating thing is that you can see Sam's right hand coming all the way from the Mediterranean, and Gomez is still eating it much of the time. And Gomez has no power for the most part. He's still amateur punching. This round right here is a good round that may go to Sam on a comparative basis, and he's back in the fight. This is the beauty of heavyweight boxing. And Gomez does not have punching power. Gomez just dropped the mouthpiece right out of his mouth after Sam hit him with that right hand. Sam seemed disoriented because the referee didn't stop it to put the mouthpiece back in. You're okay, you're okay. As the CompuBox numbers mount, Gomez is closing in on some records. Non-essential tonight. Yeah, but a lot of punches are not power punches. They're point punches. That's why he's going for points. And depending on the judge, some judges like effective power punches. If that's the case, you would have, Sam would have at least won about three rounds of this fight, at least if you go for power punching. So it's a tumultuous battle now as they come into the eighth round. Sinan Samuel Sam and the Red Trunks has taken a fearsome beating from start to finish by Juan Carlos Gomez. But ploddingly, determinedly, Sam has kept pounding his straight right hand to Gomez's body and head and has done enough damage that the issue is by no means settled as these last three rounds unfold. And I don't think that Sam has much respect for the punching power of Gomez neither. Nor should he at this point, because he can't win the fight if he does. He's got to just walk through Gomez as he has all night. He's got to walk through it. He's got to let the punches go, particularly the right hand and the uppercut when Gomez leans in. Gomez still letting his hands go freely, but with nowhere near the impact that he delivered early in the fight. So this is a case where we go by that computer box going. Gomez is way, way ahead. It's impossible for him to lose. But when actual judges look, they sometimes look for punching power. They have a different situation. It would be hard to give Sam most of the rounds, though, because Gomez is hitting him yeah, yeah. more or less at will. He's hitting him at will. Gomez should be very comfortable ahead in this fight. Sam's just looking to try to land one more big right hand. He's willing to take about 50 or 100 blows to get there. There you go. Well, I missed that one. Let me try another one. To watch Gomez comes right back. Gomez never cuts off completely and lets him take control. Even if he gets hit with a big punch, he comes right back and takes control of the fight again. Sam landed a hard left hook, along with that little right hand to the body. Now Sam takes two shots to the body by Gomez, up and under. That was helping for an opportunity right there for Sam. Sam fought a British heavyweight named Danny Williams, unbeaten at the time, some had hope. He just plodded forward and walked Williams down. This is a busy fight that he's fighting. Right? Gomez knows how to win fights. You know, this fight reminds me a little bit of, uh, on, a, on a lower level, of uh, George Foreman and Michael Moore. You know, where Michael Moore was just beating them up for nine rounds. But unfortunately, Sam doesn't have the big heavy hands that George has. Well, the magic came in round 10 for Foreman. That 
particular night, November 5, 1994. Right hand was partially blocked by Gomez that time. He's finally gotten conscious enough of it to try to put his left yeah. hand up. Gomez is very beatable, but I don't know that the Sam is going to throw enough punches to do it. Sam looks exhausted. Yes, himself. The last two rounds. Let me look at your face. You did good. You have to keep up the pressure. You have to use your right hand a lot more. You have to hit him. Hit him until he breaks. You have to hit him. Give him some water. He wants you to get close. He wants you to get close so he can keep hitting the hitter with a right. Stay away from this guy. Keep putting that jab out and move side to side. Get away from this guy. Don't get close. I wonder if Gomez has ever been in such a physical fight before. Larry, that was the same thing I was thinking about, too. I don't think he's had this type of uh, fight in, in his career. Because for the most part, I've been led to believe that he was protected very much when he was fighting in Germany. Well, it's the uh, eighth time in Gomez's career that he's gone into the ninth round as a professional. It's the first time ever for Sinan Samuel Sam. Never been this far before. <laughs> I'm not sure Sam has a big right hand left. He's so tired at this point. Yeah, he's not used to going these rounds himself. He looks like he can't even get his feet together to, to balance one big shot. And Gomez is using all of his experience to do things instinctively now. And now the tape is coming off of Samuel Sam's glove. Sinan Samuel Sam. Again, Samuel's a middle name. Last name is Sam. And the trainer takes advantage of the delay to offer some instructions. And the referee tries to speed him up. Time in! Box! Ah, I see. The trainer said, go hit him with a big right hand. <laughs> Took advantage of that time while he was tying up the tape to give him some instructions, which Look. you're not supposed to do. Only the second and third punches that Sam has landed in the round. Trainer giving him an excellent idea. Throw the right hand, try to hit him with it. That's another good shot to the body by Sam. That time he got his feet set. Well, it looks, Jim, no matter uh, what we thought or wanted, we're going to probably end up going to the scorecards. <laughs> That, that suggests the fatigue that you see on uh, Gomez's face, that low punch. Yeah. But, you know, he's still doing things. Though. The one thing he's never cut off, he's still working to adding up those points. And in his mind, he's like he's, he's trying to score the fight and trying to add up points, points, points. You know, he's obviously a very good fighter, well-schooled, tremendous experience as a Cuban amateur. Uh, but I can't say that he thrills me as a potential heavyweight contender. No, I'm not really that impressed. When I saw him fight with Al Cole, I was, I thought maybe that was just a bad night. Sam almost caught him with a left hook. Gets him with a right hand. Gomez has landed about 300 punches in the round. Sam has landed only about 10. The issue remains unsettled. This is the last round. This is the last round. This is it. You, you come out first. I want you to do a pretty box in here. Stay away. Fight him outside. 
If you want to get him, do you have to do it now? Beat him. You can break him. This is the last round. Take all your energy. This, this fight is for us. Be, I want it to be a nice, nice round. This fight is for us. Don't, don't be overconfident. You have to hit him more. You can't win if you don't hit him. It has been an entertaining fight in its own way. Primarily because of Sam's determination and courage. In, in, on a night when Gomez has a chance to break records, copy box records for punches landed by a heavyweight in a 10 round fight. Harold, how do you have it through nine? <laughs> okay, Jim, 88, 82, seven rounds to two, one Carlos Gomez. Jim is just too busy. I can't find two, more than two rounds just to get to Samuel Sam. Jim, I gotta tell you something. You notice the tape's coming off every round. A few years back, Commissioner Larry has it in Jersey, found duct tape that keeps it on. They don't have to keep rolling time. California adopted it. Last week, we saw it in the Mohegan Sun. Larry has it had a very good idea. I think it should spread. Duct tape instead of adhesive tape. Correct, Jim. Good news for modern man. At this stage right now, Gomez is doing what we call just ticking off the clock. Trying to stay out of range, change directions, do just enough to not get hurt. Go to the limit, win his decision. Even the guys, is, he's down, there's no power, he's just doing enough to get points, that's all. Both guys probably about as tired as they've ever been. Certainly Sam, having gone 10 rounds for the first time, and having been hit with this many punches, is gonna have an interesting sleep tonight. has spent a lot of time laughing and chuckling in there. But, but in between, he's still picking up his points. Able to land four or five punches in the time it takes to Sam to load up and fire one right hand. Term, we'll have a heavyweight champion of the world from Turkey. That's right, unless he gets somebody he can knock out with one punch, and that's not going to happen too much. Ten seconds to go. Sam hears the warning. Tries to leap in one last time. Gomez, he pats him with the last combination, and that's that. It's in the record books now. Care to speculate on who won the fight, Larry? They're going to go to the official judges' scorecards. I'm neutral. <laughs> <laughs> Not taking any chances tonight. Well, going the way it's been the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Got to figure it's going to be unanimous decision for Sam, right? Right. Well, okay. I mean, at least last week. <laughs> Mosley De La Hoya not necessarily in that category. <laughs> Friendly hug from two guys who reputedly don't particularly like each other. Yeah, I think it's more tied up with the promoter, probably, and Gomez, Klaus Peter Cole, more so than the two fighters. Now, Jose. Pretty good. It's a machine here. It's a machine. It's a machine. Sam getting some love from the crowd for his brave performance. Gomez goes to the same corner and gets disapproval. Yep. 
<laughs> Nobody likes a winner, huh? No. Nope. Well, this this game is not about artistry to uh, most fans, especially where heavyweights are concerned. Unless you happen to have the reputation of someone like Roy Jones. So you expect they're going to boo, boo this decision in Gomez's favor? No, I don't. I don't know what. Yeah. What, what mind they have here in Buffalo? All right, well we'll find out. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after ten rounds, we go to the scorecards. Melvina Lathan scores at 98 to 91. Frank Adams has it 99 to 90, and Steve Weisfeld scores it 97 to 92. All for the winner by unanimous decision, still undefeated, the Black Panther, Juan Carlos Gomez.